Hello everybody, my name is Will and welcome back to Sprocket. Today uh, we're going to be doing our own take on the kind of panther, uh, like a late war German medium tank. Uh, what I'm probably going to do is steal the panther turret and try and make it work on this chassis. Uh, and fingers crossed we come up with something that is both uh, believable while also being somewhat interesting. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I've done this kind of a thing in the past before. I built like a Tiger 3 kind of deal. Uh, this is kind of like the Panther 3, I guess. Um, so this ends up... So, I okay, fair warning, I do end up building this thing a little bit too small. So it's a little bit lighter than it necessarily should be. But if you just imagine it scaled up by like 10, 15% and hitting that 50 tons, uh, because wh whoops, uh, mistake... Yeah, this is uh, kind of what I would have done with the Panther, maybe? I don't know. Uh, there's definitely a couple things on here that make it a little bit unrealistic. Probably wouldn't have got through the design phase in this exact guise. Um, for instance, you can see here where I've got, I've got these cheeks. They kind of end up being a little bit detrimental for armor, especially once you start trying to angle, which you really want to do in a tank. Those just flatten up and end up being just thinner pieces of armor, even though from the front, they're obviously much thicker. Uh, so that probably wouldn't end up on the final tank, but honestly, it's just nice to do something a little bit different with these kind of things. So I wanted to just change a few distinct sections of the tank to make it distinct enough from the panther that you wouldn't really be able to mistake them if they were next to each other. Like, you'd go, oh look, they look similar, and then you'd look at this one and say, something's wrong. Did AI generate that or something, or was that just some stupid English guy who's yabbering on about absolutely nothing? And it's the latter. Um, <laughs> speaking about AI, uh, there's these, like, banger racing adverts that have been posted all over the place where I live and uh, they are the most egregiously AI generated adverts I've ever seen. It is it just hilariously bad how their AI came out at the end. You guys really could have run that through a couple more generations. <laughs> Um, there's my feedback to people making adverts using AI. Either A, don't, or B, do it well. <laughs> um, but yeah. The, this, I guess you could call it the Panther 3. Technically speaking, it does have, I think, slightly better statistics than, like, the Panther with the 76mm gun I put on the 88 from the Panther 2, but because of the size, I did have to uh, re reduce the propellant length on the 88mm, so I think it actually has less penetration than the Panther 2 had, so it's a bit of a side grade from the Panther 2 that was, uh, I don't believe it was built. They might have done a turret or something, but I'm pretty sure it's just a concept. I know it from War Thunder, and yeah, I'm pretty sure it didn't exist because War Thunder got rid of it from the tech tree, didn't they? Yeah, there was a whole controversy about that. I'm gonna say it didn't exist and uh, not fact check myself, and either way, I'm gonna find out uh, if it's true or false once I upload this video in the comment section below, because that's just how this works. Um, also, I, last time I mentioned that my cat just yells for food all the time um, and then doesn't eat all of the food and people seem to think maybe that I don't like feed them or f something. I do. They just, they're just rude to be honest uh, and I, I do try and stick to a schedule um, but uh, they are just weird and they just change their mind on how they want to eat all the time. I promise, I've tried everything. It's been five years, you know? We, we've been through we've been through the, uh, the ups and downs many, many times, and this is just how she is. She's fine. She's, on, she's back on eating again. Now she'll eat whatever I give her, and I have to actively be like, no, no, you can't have food, otherwise you're gonna get fat, and then you're gonna, you're gonna die young. And I don't want that, because I want to be able to pick her up and go blah, 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 for a couple more years, you know? Because that's that's great. That's good fun. <laughs> well, how have we got here already? I mean, technically, the panther's named after a big cat, and my cat is a medium-sized cat. I'd say they're an averagely-sized cat. They're not particularly big, but they're not small either. They've put on weight since I got them, but, you know, not dangerous amounts. 
Okay, so uh, we've got a shape for the hull right now. So as you can see, there's a couple of things going on slightly different to what the panther normally has. Uh, we've got these cheeks, which uh, these cheeks are kind of a, they're kind of an upside and a downside on tanks. Obviously from the front, you can see that they can be thinner and they would provide more protection. But as soon as you angle, if they are thinner, you can see that that is going to be a weak spot. Uh, but also one thing I've done is I've got these slightly dented sheets on the side of the the tank here. Now these are just copy pasted parts but I've slightly rotated them and moved them about a bit so they don't look too uniform. Uh, fingers crossed you like that. I think that looks quite good. Uh, it's something I've never really done before so uh, yeah hopefully it's good. Also I've called it the lynx because I was like thinking big cats you got the tiger you got the panther. I just went for the first one that came to my head and that was lynx. Um, so yeah that's the name. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't really have a ring to it like the panther, does it? It's also dawning on me that I think I've built it too small. I think we need to fill more of this space, really. But uh, I've put parts on it now, so I guess it's just going to be small. Um, yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> It was at this point that I really should have dedicated a little bit of time to just making this thing bigger. Uh, but I, I didn't want to go through the effort at the time. So, yeah, it is it is kind of more like a more like a hybrid light medium version of the Panther than anything else. Uh, I'm still probably going to title the video I built the Panther 3 or something clickbaity like that. But uh, I will admit it's not much of a uh, not much of a German medium tank in terms of size and weight. But um, oh, well. <laughs> Maybe it's maybe this is a successor to the Panzer IV rather than uh, a, a full separate medium tank. You know, I I, I don't know. Comp I'm just spewing absolute nonsense at this point. But hey, at least we're somewhat back on t topic about tanks uh, because before that little cutback, which got me back on track, uh, I was talking about my cat. Who the reason I I was talking about my cat? She got out of bed, and I'm talking about the cat again. I have a problem. <laughs> um. Yeah, okay, right. Anyway, uh, before I get completely distracted again, which is already kind of happening, um, I, I honestly, I don't really know what else to say. Uh, you can see at the back, we've got this, where the fuel tanks are, we got this kind of cut. That's something that I stole from the Panzer IV as well. I, I, honestly, I could not tell you what that is really there for, but I thought it would be neat if I did something like that, so that's why I've done it. Um, and it just kind of makes the back not look exactly like a panther. That was kind of basically the reason I did it, which feels a little bit lame to admit, but uh, I, I just want I just want it to be visually distinct. You know, I, and I've, I've said that already, but uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, and turns out there's a lot more complexity to the Panther II turret than I thought there was. I was looking at it and I was like, hmm, I, I don't feel like it's quite right. And there's this curve in the middle and I feel like that that's just never really dawned on me. It's not really like just a hard plate and then an angle. It's, it's a bit of a curve. And so fingers crossed, that's a pretty good replica of a Panther turret. It is a odd shape it's just like you look at it and you say oh that'd be really easy to build in sprocket and then you build it and you're like hmm that's not quite right <laughs> uh, and i hope by the end of it it's uh very clearly a panther turret because that's something i definitely wanted to uh basically replica um but yeah, much more awkward than I anticipated for a very simple seeming turret, but uh, I, we got there in the end. <laughs> okay, uh, I still think we're lacking just a little something something. Uh, so I've got these kind of, I don't know, viewfinder thingies on the side. I really wanted to model my own, but it was... Uh, proving difficult and uh, I only have so much time in the day I'm afraid so uh, yeah we've had to settle with these like inverted cupolas uh, we've got the German cupola on top I think it's just like the engine deck feels very large or something along those lines something somewhere just feels a little bit off and I am struggling to notice exactly what it is but uh yeah, fingers crossed at some point I notice, uh, and I am able to fix it, because, yeah, at the moment, we don't know. And now it's mantlet time, and uh, I really wanted to um, get the ball, kind of cast ball mantlet that the Panther 2 had, just because I think that's an interesting design, uh, and 
probably also not the hardest thing to make in the world for its, you know, performance that it offers. Um, in Sprocket, it does have a little bit of a problem in that uh, when you mount it onto the gun mantlet, it uh, kind of adds a lot of weight to the thing and it ends up slowing down the turret traverse and in some ways basically grinding it to a halt. Um, it does have to... It do, Sorry. It is able to move up and down without me having to do fire like the thing, which uh, I've had to do before. That was on my uh, MBT that I made. Was that? No, that wasn't last video. That was two videos ago. Um, but uh, it, it's not quick <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. And yeah, it, it's a bit of a, a bit of a problem. We. I wonder if you can add counterweights to the back, maybe, uh, in order to make it traverse better, or if it is just, like, the heavier the stuff that you attach to mantler is, the slower the mantler traverses, which is a shame. Um, I feel like if it would be better if we could have counterweights, uh, because then we're, we're still having to add weight to the tank, you know, we're still going to have to come up with compromises, but uh, at least it allows us to improve the speed of the thing a little bit. Uh, so, I mean, maybe it is that way, I, I should probably do a little bit of experimentation. And uh, somebody also came up with a method of doing a cylinder using a turret, um, but because I've been using these new add-on structures that Sprocket has uh, got now, and also the corner tool, which is mm, lovely. I love the corner tool. It's uh, You can finally actually have control of weird edges. So when you get like graphical glitches on the edges of your plates, you can you can fix them, which you've never been able to do before. So that is that's super cool. That is like the best change ever in the world. Sorry if you hear the cat. This is a very cat focused video. I'll feed her immediately after I record this voice segment. <laughs> uh, here in goes the gun. Um, so. I wanted to have a high velocity gun, so I did go for an 88mm gun. I was tempted to go with a little bit of a lower velocity 105mm gun, but uh, I, I'm glad I went with the 88 just because since this is a little bit smaller than a Panther actually is, I wouldn't have had as much room behind the gun for the crew. It would have been really, really cramped, and I would have ended up having to cut quite a lot of uh, the uh, propellant length, and it would have basically would have been a glorified howitzer at that point, I think. So, it's probably the right thing to uh, have put an 88 in this thing. It could have even made the 76 work, but for some reason, the 76 is just a gun I do not like. Like, it's not even a 76, it's a 75. I've said 76 so many times, and I bet there's already so many comments in the comment section below about, oh, oh no, the Panther's got a 75, not a 76. Yeah, I don't know. It's probably because in War Thunder, it's just like, it's not a gun I get along with. I, I like the Panthers as tanks, but uh, the gun is is just not something that I'm hugely favorable with. Um, yeah. Also, uh, on a completely different note, uh, I need to uh, do some kind of a stream for... Uh, YouTube members, which uh, I haven't done. And YouTube memberships, you can you can join now. It's we got two tiers. We got a very cheap one and a slightly more expensive one, and you get some stuff. Uh, and I, I need to do a stream. I'm thinking um, at some point, maybe tomorrow, I might just stream something. It might not necessarily be Sprocket or Flyout. It could just be could just be whatever I'm feeling at the time. But uh, yeah, it's gonna be fun to uh, chat with you guys personally. Okay, I think I'm nearly there with the general shape of this thing. It's just going to be adding a little bit of extra detail here and there, and then we're going to be working on the interior uh, and getting the crew in this thing, which is going to be interesting. <laughs> Are you proud of me? I didn't even call it Human Tetris, which I did actually just call it now. So if you were proud of me, uh, you're probably not proud of me anymore. But uh, don't worry, that is an experience I am more than familiar with. Wow, that got real really quickly. Um, anyway, <laughs> are your parents proud of you? What? Sorry, I did not have to go there. Um, human Tetris, yes, that's what we're doing now. Uh, five crew I wanted to fit in this thing. It's just a very standard crew number for German tanks. Uh, three in the turret, two in the hull. It's a solid number. I'm gonna make it work. We've obviously got our Pintle machine gun in the front and then our driver. And then in the turret, we've got a gunner, loader, and commander uh, who sits in that nice commander's cupola on top. And yeah, 
that that's that's the crew compliment basically and uh yeah it would be nice to uh be able to actually represent commanders and radio operators again at some point soon uh obviously we're still in very early doors for geometric internals uh we still don't have battles we still don't really have uh, any kind of scenarios which would be nice to uh Nice to see fairly soon because uh, I, I do I do kind of miss doing them. Uh, I, I've been tempted to go back and like build in the old versions so that we can get the scenarios back. But frankly, I'm just in, I really enjoy doing the internals. It forces you to build tanks in a very different way to how you were before this uh, geometric internals update. So I don't want to go back and lose that because I do think it's helped a lot of my recent designs become like grounded in reality uh, especially like the the super land ship thing that i built like three sprocket videos ago um four if you include the competition i think um that thing normally when i built them they, they felt very very unrealistic but i built that thing and i was like you know what i could i can kind of see it you know it's insane but insaner things have happened that the, you know the the russians actually built the t-35 the british actually built the a1e1 independent it, you know they might not have become massively successful tanks but that's not all you know that's that's not what you necessarily need to do for it to go down in history we remember that tank because bovington tank museum has the a1 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 independent you know russia still has t-35s laying around and uh in many ways that's all that counts <laughs> It's like, it's like weird planes, like the Westland Lysander. I mean, I, I was going to use that as an example of an unsuccessful plane, but that plane wasn't even unsuccessful. You know, it, it worked. And, and you've got things like uh, the ME209. They were unsuccessful. They were weird, but they were built. So th there's something about that kind of an ethos with, uh, with like vehicles where yeah sure it was weird yeah sure it didn't make a lot of sense that's why it didn't get produced but they tried that i really enjoy um and so that's i think a lot of my builds end up falling into that category like i like building i like building tankettes because they're a little bit silly i like building land ships because they're a little bit silly i like building planes with weird arrangements in fly out like gull wings or push propellers just because they're a little bit different but they're not so far-fetched that they're weird uh, and and to, to bring this point back before i run out of time which i very rapidly am and uh, i think geometric internals really helps with those designs to just ground them in reality because before you could just build a tank that was a pancake that nobody could actually fit inside and just have it have seven million millimeters of armor and you'd just be like ah that's a weird tank but it, it wasn't grounded in reality in many ways so yeah I, that, that's that's what I'm really enjoying, uh, and you hopefully uh, agree with me, but uh, we're about done with building now. Okay, and this should be the tank roughly finished. Now, uh, I don't think this is uh, maybe the best work I've ever done, but yeah, it's alright. I should probably also add some rear fenders. Yeah, I think that helps. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, right. Well, I've never driven this before, uh, so I don't really know if it's going to work or how it's going to work, um, but I'll run you through some stats. Uh, we've got an 88mm gun. Uh, I roughly based it off the uh, 88 from the Panther 2. Didn't really exactly get uh, perfect numbers. we got five crew, uh, a gunner, loader, commander, driver, and hull machine gunner. Plenty of ammunition in this thing, plenty of fuel, uh, and a pretty big eight-cylinder engine, but honestly, only about 518 horsepower, so definitely could be more powerful here. Um, but yeah, fingers crossed that's enough to actually push it to a reasonable speed. Um, I think I might also have put in the wrong horsepower number, so my gearing might be slightly off. Uh, <laughs> who knows? Either way, we're not too slow. I do notice there's quite a lot of um, quite a lot of weight at the front of this gun. Is what I'm trying to say. That is moving my whole camera. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, interesting. Okay, I have corrected the gun. Not going up and down. It was not connected to the right piece. Hang on. Ha hang on. Oh, it's quite slow though. <laughs> Hmm, maybe I need to uh, increase the amount of torque on this thing. I know it's on max, but uh, 
Wow, that is... Uh, that's... <laughs> that's not very quick, is it? Uh, I mean, that's more like it, to be fair. It's not quick, but it... You know, it, it'll do the job for now. Uh, that way we don't have to go into the files and edit them. You can see the horizontal traverse isn't quite as bad. Uh, in reality, probably wouldn't be this bad, but um, eh, it's fine. Mobility is something. It's not too bad. Um, I reckon we're probably only going to top out at like 35 miles an hour, which isn't that bad, I suppose. That's okay. Um... Appearance-wise, something's gone on here. I had some hatches. What's happened? <laughs> Where have those gone? Okay, there we go. Now it's not looking so weird. The hatches, I think, they because they were missing, it was looking very, uh, very plain on the front there. So fingers crossed that's helped. We kind of need um, something on the side here as well. There's just nothing going on. Maybe I can fit some equipment on here. Uh, I mean, these more fit on the turret almost uh we kind of just need these i reckon there we go we've had a little bit more decoration and i think i'm happy to call that good so uh let's give a, a little run over these uh like suspension test things i think honestly with the size of this thing we can probably gun straight past the small ones onto the uh, the medium and the large ones and hopefully Hopefully it does well. I, I think we should have pretty good suspension on this thing. There's uh, quite large torsion bars, so lots and lots of springiness. Yeah, no problem on the medium-sized ones. Large ones, uh, the uh, the sprocket wheel, actually, because it has a front transmission, might hit. But uh, maybe not. Maybe not. We might be okay. And then, you know, why, why don't we do a jump? We actually haven't even fired the gun yet. Gosh, look at all these things I'm forgetting to do. Like... Very, very basic parts. Uh, we did hit the sprocket wheel, but yeah, that's that's fine, honestly. <laughs> it's doing quite well. And the gun fires oh, really quickly, actually. That is, that is a crazy fast reload. Um, yeah, I doubt it would actually reload that quickly in real life. But uh, if we get a bit of a run up, I reckon this one's going to give us our best jump here. Uh, and then... Well, I think we're about done, so we can get a pretty shot of this thing in uh, in midair, and uh, then we can call it a day. So if I just do it, there we go. <laughs> it looks like it's on that ramp, almost. Look at that. What a twist. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but if you enjoyed this one, uh, please have a like, comment, and or subscribe. And I hope to see you for more stuff like this in the future. I can see some transmission sticking through the bottom, so just don't pay any attention to that. Uh, but, yep. Yeah. For now, <laughs> goodbye. And as always, a huge thank you to YouTube Super members Cody Fox, Rolsersbachen, Marlon Gwecken, Stug3, and Terra. And a final thank you to remaining patrons Camjam125, DJ Pete, Skavoon, Gamasa929, Sad Cat, Last Edge 11, Ryan Brody, Stug3, The Kinesian Emperor, Worth Sickle, and Zeit Wolverine. Thank you so much for your support, and uh, bye bye, Patreon.